What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another deck and battle here on PTCGO and this time we are taking a look at Gardevoir GX. And you guys might be thinking, well why are we still talking about Gardevoir? This card came out like three months ago and that's because it's still really, really good. <laughs> uh, in particular at the recent European Air National Championships, to no surprise, Gardevoir performed very well. But the interesting part is that players were seeming to drop a couple of previously key cards from the list in favor of a much more max potion uh, heavy variant of the deck. So this is actually very close to the list that made top four piloted by uh, Chris Shemansky. Uh, the only thing that is different is I did forget to put in the exact uh, Curlias and Raltzes that he was using. He was using uh, slightly different ones, but uh, everything else is you know, 99% of this deck is identical to what he played. So I will point that out real quick. I believe he was playing one Psychic Ralt, and I have this inverted. I think he was playing two Psychic Curlia and one Fairy one. But other than that, like I said, this list, uh, I believe, should be the same. So Gardevoir GX, for those who st still, for whatever reason, aren't too familiar with it, 230 hit points, stage two from Burning Shadows. And the reason it is so good is partially for this ability, Secret Spring. So once during your turn before you attack, you may attach a fairy energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. And then its attack infinite force does 30 damage times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So the idea is you get a couple of these Gardevoir GX in play, you can accelerate extra energy and do larger amounts of damage. So once you get a couple energy on your Gardevoir, it starts to ramp up to take one hit knockouts. And it's just a very, very powerful attacker in the game. Also has an insanely good GX move, Twilight GX, for a single Fairy Energy. Shuffle 10 cards from your discard pile back into your deck. So this is great, obviously, against Gardevoir, or I'm sorry, Garbodor decks. But just in general, if you can find a turn to actually use this, it's just an insane form of recovery that can get you back a ton of resources. So another interesting thing about this list is playing two copies of Gallade. So in the past, players typically favored one copy of Gallade. It was a solid back attacker. Its ability had synergy with Octillery. And, uh, you know, it just seemed like a nice little one of for its sensitive blade attack for a DCE. The 60 plus 70 more damage if you played a supporter card from your hand that turn. So it's a solid backup attacker, but in particular in this new Crimson Invasion format, Gallade becomes, I think, an even better attacker because Silvali GX in particular was a very hyped new card coming out of the set, which is weak to fighting Pokemon. In particular, a metal variant featuring Silvali uh, was running around at the event. So having a couple of these Gallade kind of gives you an alternate you know, strategy to go with. Instead of powering up a bunch of Gardevoirs and getting knocked out by all these metal Pokemon, you can just power up these Gallades instead. They only give it one prize, they hit Savali for weakness, and they're still a decent attacker. So also you hit things like Drampa GX for weakness, and also Zora Arc GX, probably the most anticipated card that had come out of Shining Legends, was also running around at the event too. So like I did mention, uh, Chris was playing some slightly different Raltzes and Kroyas, one reason he was favoring, I believe, the Psychic versions is because they just offer you a little bit better type coverage in certain matchups. Since different, you know, I think cards like Registeel and Metal Pokemon were hyped going into the event that could easily pick off Ralts and Curlias. Uh, I believe that's why he was playing two copies of the Psychic Curlia. Also has a half decent attack. Uh, quick turn, flip two coins, does 30 damage times the number of heads for a DCE. So this can be all right against certain psychic weak Pokemon as well. Uh, in particular, stuff like Buzzwole, you can, you know, if you have a choice ban, you hit two heads, you can actually do 180 damage with this Curlia. So it's good against certain things, but it's mainly just to, you know, give you better type coverage against these quick metal attackers like uh, Registeel, uh, for example. So we're also kind of going old school. We're playing the one Alolan Vulpix and also the 1-1 one, one Octillery line. In the past, players were favoring Sylveon GX, which I still think has its merits in a, a particular metagame. But for this type of event, it looks like Chris and a couple other players, you know, cut Sylveon entirely. And like I said, went back to basics just with this Vulpix and 1-1 uh, one, one Octillery line. Then, of course, we have three copies of Tapu Lele in the deck as well. So going on to the trainer cards, uh, the supporter count, not too much to really talk about. 4N, 3 Guzma, 2 Bridget, which is seeming to become more and more of a standard for these you know, setup-based decks. 
and three copies of Sycamore, which is a little surprising. I expected to see four in the list, but it was only playing three. So maybe between your three copies of Tapu Lele and Octillery, maybe Chris uh, didn't feel like he needed all four copies. So it took him pretty far into the tournament, so it can't be that bad. And going on to a lot of the item cards, they will look very familiar to people who have seen Gardevoir in the past. Two Choice Band, four Ultra Ball, two Field Blower, four Rare Candy, of course, uh, one Parallel City. Uh, but the couple of interesting cards in the list is Max Potion. So Chris and a couple other people were playing a heavy count of Max Potion. So you heal all damage from one of your Pokemon if you do discard all energy from that Pokemon. And I think this was a really good meta call because in particular I remember at the end of the Burning Shadows and Shining Legends format, probably the other best deck in the format right alongside Gardevoir was Drampa Garboder. And so Drampa Garboder decks had kind of adapted to Gardevoir and started playing a heavy count of Po Town. Also things like Espeon EX, Espeon GX, Tapu Koko, Latios, even things like Shining Jirachi at times, and all these ways to set up like weird de-evolution plays with Espeon EX. So Max Potion, very, very handy to kind of counter those types of spread strategies. Uh, even against other decks like Decidueye, Max Potion is great against Greninja. I still think Greninja, if it sets up, can probably still beat Gardevoir, but Max Potion definitely gives you much better chances of winning without having to play something like a Giratina promo. Also, I think the other mainly hyped card that came out of Crimson Invasion was Buzzwell GX. So coming into the event, I think people just expected to see Buzzwell just because it was so hyped, and it has that Jet Punch attack to do 30 damage to your opponent's active and to one of their bench Pokemon. So if Buzzwell goes unchecked in the early portions of the game, they can actually just kind of clear your field of all of your like low HP evolving basics. So Max Potion, another great card to handle that. And also decks that can't knock you out in one hit, things like Galissapod or Zoroark GX, just as an example. They might do around 100, 120 damage to you. Well, guess what? You can Max Potion off all that damage and keep on swinging. So Max Potion, I think a great meta call uh, for this event. So, uh, you know, just Big shout out to all those players who actually decided to play Max Potion. It seemed like it really paid off at the event. And the other interesting card in our trainer card list is two copies of Super Rod. So since we are playing the heavy Max Potion count, and we're going to have to discard our energy a little bit more than normal, uh, we're playing two copies of Super Rod just to allow us to get energy back into our deck. So instead of playing Rescue Stretcher, uh, we're playing this instead. So we can get Pokemon back into our deck, of course, which is you know one of the main reasons you play Super Odd or Rescue Stretcher. But like I said, we are favoring the double Super Odd just because we're going to get rid of energy more than we would previously in other versions of the deck that did not play Max Potion. And going on to the energy count, we are playing four copies of Double Carlos Energy, obviously, and then seven Fairy to round out the list. So seven Fairy, a little below average, but with the two Super Rods, I think we'll be able to effectively recycle them throughout the course of a game. But anyways, I'm going to head over to the battle portion of the video, and we'll show you how this new uh, build and new take on Gardevoir GX looks in action. All right, guys, so it looks like we have ourselves a game here. It probably has a Psychic deck box. Not really sure how much that is going to tell us about their deck, but it could be some sort of garbage or variant that could be a safe guess, potentially. And, okay, we actually have... Oh, we have a Mulligan. I thought that was a Ralt at first. Never mind, that was going to be a half-decent hand. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so we are going to take a Mulligan, unfortunately. I got a little excited about having turn one Bridget, but uh, hopefully our next hand will treat us a little bit better. So opponent's got three basics to start with, so they might not even need to bridge a turn one. That could be good for them. And, okay, we have a, another pretty solid opening hand. We have a Ralts to start with. We have a Tapu Lele in hand ready to go, so this actually isn't too bad. And, okay, that is a Talonflame. It's not a card I am very used to seeing. So Talonflame, it's a stage two. If you have it in your opening hand, you can start with it, uh, not even needing to evolve, so that's kind of good. Um, but definitely a card you don't see too often. But here, I'm going to bridge it. And unfortunately, we have a Ralts prize. So I think what I'm going to do is actually... Well, I guess we we grab Vulpix. That means our bench is going to be completely filled. We won't be able to bench another Lele. But uh, you know, what I think I want to do is kind of hide behind uh, Vulpix 
and use Beacon for a little bit because our opponent's going to be doing 40 damage to us with this Talon Flame, with its Gale Wings attack. So I don't mind this Vulpix going down at some point. So, uh, And then from there, we'll just pass. So not too bad of an opening hand or opening turn. Our opponent's going to get down a Psychic Energy and they're going to play Lily. So all sorts of unorthodox cards or, you know, less common cards in our opponent's deck here. But it looks like some sort of a... Maybe like an Espeon Drampa deck or something like that. There, I mean, there's a good chance Garbutter could pop up if that's the case too. And so Talonflame has this attack air blitz. They're going to do 40 damage to us and they get to search their deck for any two cards. So if you're not too familiar with Talonflame, definitely a powerful card when you can start with it. Just most decks uh, typically can't afford to play the card, but certain decks, if they play like a very low basic count, uh, Talonflame actually can be kind of handy. So uh, let's see. Okay, so... We do have an end set, that's good, we can disrupt our opponent. Do we attach DCE before playing the end? I think that's the big question here. I guess we can play this field lower as well, get rid of the choice band and float stone. And, hmm. You know what, I, I feel like we're safe if we play the DCE. Yeah, I, I kind of like it. You know, we are susceptible to like a Lele DCE Guzma play or something, but you know what, I'm gonna take the risk. And here we're going to end our opponent to a new hand. And actually we draw a rare candy Gallade, which is pretty decent as well. So that'll kind of ensure that this uh, Ralts actually doesn't go down. So that seems like the right play. We can rare candy into the Gallade and then we can actually beacon for uh, a couple more evolution cards. Probably a, maybe a Octillery and a Curlia. That could be good. Or actually maybe even... I think I might actually go for Lele, because what we can do here is this Vulpix is going to go down. It only has 20 hit points left, so what we can do is we can grab Lele, and then that way whenever our bench spot frees up, we can actually bench Lele to grab Guzma to take a knockout on this Drampa GX. So that seems like kind of a cute play. I think either that or Kolia is fine, but we're going to go for the Lele Guzma play for next turn, hopefully. So to our opponent gets down this turn. I'd imagine we'll probably see an Espeon GX at some point if our opponent is playing EV and Psychic Energies. Here we see a Ranguru, and we do see a Trubbish. So this is some sort of Espeon, Drampa, Garbo, or type of variant, but all sorts of interesting cards in here. They have the Talon Flame. They have Lily. They have two Lily. Okay, I'm not used to seeing that. So let's see what our opponent's going to opt to do here. And they have Peril City. That actually really screws us up. So unfortunately, we have to discard till we have three bench Pokemon. So I think we get rid of those. I hate having to get rid of a Rawls, but I think just Octillery in combination with the Galley that we have in play is just too strong of a combo to pass up on. Luckily, we can still pull off our little Guzma play we were talking about, uh, since we will free up a bench spot since this Vulpix will be knocked out. But, hmm. Hopefully we can get down a Curlia this turn. That also would be pretty big, because more than likely our opponent will knock out Gallade with Espeon GX the following turn, so we need to be able to keep streaming our evolutions. So that's not what we want to see. We top deck the galley. That's not doing too much for us right now. So what I might do here is... Yeah, we should definitely go for the layaway play. We could grab an N, but you know, I kind of like the idea of just getting free two prizes off this Drampa GX. That seems pretty good, especially since it's Righteous Edge attack could be a little bit annoying otherwise. So here we'll Premonition, rearrange the top five cards of our deck. And unfortunately, that's a bunch of cards we don't want to see too much of. Uh, we do see the Kroya though, so that's actually really good. We want to get that in play to start setting up a Gardevoir. So here I'll attach the Fairy Energy to the Ralts. We'll Guzma bring up that uh, Drampa GX. And actually what I might do here is... Hmm. The thing is, do, I, do we attach the Choice Band or not? That's the thing. I, I kind of want to hang on to it. That way... Because, I mean, we can attach it, but it doesn't make a difference because we knock out this Trampa either way, and then Espeon probably just knocks us out. So, I think we're fine to just hang on to the Choice Band, actually. So, here we'll just do Sensibly for 260. And we'll get a Ralt and a Choice Band. Two cards I honestly don't really want to see. Unless we top deck a Field Blower or something, I really don't want to see this Ralt, actually. 
Your opponent has a Garboder, and okay, so they get the DC on Espeon GX. Even though this Gallade will probably get taken out, you know what? I'm actually not too worried. Well, I was going to say we had DC and Choice Band to be able to soften up that Espeon GX, but we did get End right here. And this hand is not much better, but I'm very thankful our opponent does not have the Garbotoxin Garboder out. That would actually be very problematic for us. But here they're actually going to go for a Divide GX, kind of seeing that if we get a Gardevoir GX, that's actually a really good attacker against this Espeon GX. And also, Gardevoir allows us to get our items back into our deck. So, uh, definitely, I think, a good move by uh, our opponent here. Here they're softening up this tap with Lele as well. So maybe they are anticipating we are going to try to attack them with Lele. So what do we do? Um, yeah, we should definitely play Super Odd before using Premonition. So we'll get back two Ralts and a Fairy Energy. And well, yeah, we Premonition before attaching. And that's not very pretty, actually. I was hoping we have a draw supporter we could grab here, but unfortunately, we don't. So we can still get a Ralts. So that's that's definitely the big thing we want to get down to start setting up a Gardevoir at some point. It's definitely going to be a key to winning this matchup. So definitely put a Curlia, a little Guzma, and then Gardevoir and Ralts. It seems okay. All right, so we'll do that, and then we can... Well, what do we do here? Do we... I think we might actually retreat since this this Espeon can actually just one-shot our Gallade, and whereas they would have to two-shot our uh, Tapu Lele GX. So we'll go for that. If they get a Choice Band, they could potentially take a knockout. We already discarded one, so I'm hoping our opponent does not have access to one. So here we'll put a choice band of our own, and maybe we should have max potion beforehand. The 20 damage actually is like kind of relevant here. It's just a little risky. You know, if we don't get knocked out in one shot, we're actually in a pretty good spot, I would say. So it just comes down to this: Do they have the choice band? That, like I said, is going to be the thing that will determine if they can take a knockout here. So let's see what they have. They have pretty big hands. So I. Yeah, maybe that was actually a bad play on my part. You know, healing 20 damage, you know, it, it feels like kind of a waste of a max potion, but if it's the difference between getting knocked out in one hit and not... Oh, and our opponent's Kukui, but... Okay, so... But here we're just going to see a Psychic. That means we're actually going to hang on with 10 hit points. And this is actually huge for us, so let's see what we're going to do. Let's uh, Premonition first before we do anything else, because that will kind of determine how this is going to go. Ooh, we actually have a Rare Candy have an end there as well so this is actually kind of a we can have kind of a decent little turn here so a couple things we could actually just like straight up go for a knockout on this Espeon GX but unfortunately that means this happily would probably get knocked out by Talonflame or Garbiter on the next turn so what I might try to do here is um, try to dig and actually set up another knockout after I max potion so yeah, here I think I'm... Yeah, I feel like I'm content just using the Max Potion. And what we can do is we can attach for turn. Yeah, and then we can Abyssal Hand, draw two more cards. We can get the Rare Candy into our Gardevoir GX. And here I'm just checking how many items I've used. That's what, 40... So only... Or I'm sorry, 80 damage so far. So Garbiter's definitely not going to knock us out. That'll be 100 damage after the Rare Candy. But here, if we end, if we hit a Fairy Energy, we can actually just take a knockout. And we whiff it. So, uh, okay. That's definitely a little anticlimactic. I mean, at least Max Potion did buy us a turn. We're not in any danger of being knocked out this turn either. So we, we didn't really lose anything this turn. We basically just didn't gain any ground. So here we'll just pass, which is unfortunate. <sighs> okay, so at least this Garbiter can't knock us out. That is the one good thing. We have Sycamore ready to go for next turn, so we should be able to take a knockout on this Espeon uh, if we have to. So let's see. It's opponent's turn. It looks like you're taking a minute to decide what they want to do here. 
Um, what do they really need? Okay, well, they have the psychic energy on Garbiter. I think that's fine. Oh, and they had... Oh, okay, I was thinking, why didn't they play Choice Band last turn, but we end them, so... All right, so I think that's fine. They definitely want to save this Aspion, make sure I don't get two prizes. Here, they're just going to do Trash Lanch for 130. I'm fine with that. We have a Max Potion in hand ready to go. So one thing I might actually do is... Because we need a DCE this turn, basically, or two Fairy Energy to take a knockout on this uh, Garbodor. So what we can do here, I'm thinking maybe we go for... I'm thinking we Ultra Ball, we get rid of Bridget and Guzma. Yeah, so... Yeah, so I basically want to play down my hand as much as possible before we use Octillery. So here what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going all in on the Scalade. So we can max potion off this uh, Tapu Lele. And here we can Ultra Ball, getting rid of Bridget and Guzma. Because we're going to Sycamore more than likely, trying to dig for this energy that we need. So... I guess, uh, I mean, I feel like we don't grab anything. So here we can Premonition. I mean, we're going to draw four out of the five cards, but I want to make sure we aren't uh, discarding anything that we don't want to. So basically one of these cards will not be get be uh, sycamore away and uh, I feel like we probably want the either the Ralt or the Max Potion to be the last card um, I guess that's fine so we'll do that and we can draw a few of these cards and unfortunately we have to sycamore them all away but like I said it's really important that we actually get the energy to take a knockout here and, okay, very nice. So, unfortunately, we don't have a field blower yet. Um, that would be great to get rid of this parallel city. But here we're going to Secret Spring. We can... Yeah, let's attach the Fairy Energy to Gardevoir, but Secret Spring. Then we can use the DC on the active to do Sensitive Blade to take a knockout. And basically, we're setting ourselves up for... Uh, Basically, to kind of sweep our opponent, we're going to knock out this Garbodor. Then our opponent will more than likely promote Espeon to return knockout or Gallade, but then Gardevoir can just pick off the Espeon. And then beyond that, I don't think they have too much to really work with. Here they're going to Shauna. And just checking how many items we've used. So, not enough to one shot a Gardevoir if they set up another uh, Garbodor, but. They don't even have a Trubbish, so we're in a good spot. That means they're going to knock out this Gallade, like I said. Not too worried about that. Here we can promote Gardevoir. And okay, we draw a DC as well. That's pretty good. So here we can bench the Ralts. A little Secret Spring to the Gardevoir. And do we attach DC? That's the question. I feel like if we attach it, it kind of sets up to where, like, no matter what our opponent promotes next turn, they will be able to be knocked out with our... Uh, infinite force attack. The only downside is that we are kind of susceptible to something like Enhanced Hammer or like a Guzma play or something like that. But, uh, you know, I think we're in a good spot. We have Octillery either way, so maybe we can draw out of uh, whatever we need to if our opponent somehow, you know, stops us from pulling off our strategy. So a big turn for our opponent. They're going to need something like an Enhanced Hammer or a Jirachi to stay in this game, I think. Or even like a Kartana GX or something like that. Because right now this Talon Flame, even if it uses Air Blitz, even though it only has a measly one energy on it, Gardevoir's Infinite Force will knock it out. But here they're just going to do Air Blitz. That means we actually have the game. Since Infinite Force is 30 for each energy on both of us, I believe we're hitting for uh, 150. So here we can evolve into Curlia. I don't think it matters too much at this point. But let's see how much damage we can uh, possibly do this turn. So we'll get back a couple Fairy Energies there. And yeah, let's just dump that hand with Sycamore and see <laughs> how much we can possibly stack on this Gardevoir. And okay, so cool, we'll attach return. Just want to point out, we still have not hit a Field Blower this game either. So uh, thankfully we did not need it here to close out the game. But here we're just going to Infinite Force for 210 on this Talon Flame uh, to take the last knockout. So yeah guys, that is going to be the Broken Voir, or whatever you want to call it, version of uh, Gardevoir GX that's been floating around. Uh, definitely a very interesting version. I'm not sure if this version is inherently better than the Sylveon version that was previously seeing a lot of play. Sylveon definitely helps you out in certain matchups like Greninja and even things like Tapu Bulu and things like that. 
Uh, and even your fire matchup, Sylveon can help with too, not that you need it that much. But then on the flip side, the Max Potion version definitely helps you out against things like Drampa Garboder, basically anything that has some sort of spread strategy like Buzzwool or something like that. So it definitely seems like another very, very powerful version of the deck to consider if you're thinking about taking uh, Gardevoir to a tournament. But as usual, guys, feel free to like and subscribe. And a big shout out to all of our supporters on patreon.com slash rarecandytcg. If you guys can go and support us over there or pick up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it would mean a lot to us. But with that, I appreciate you watching and we'll see you for the next one.